Hello everyone, in today's video we are going to explain how to synchronize our Oxy1 sequencer to an external clock signal. For these examples, we will be using the Pamela's new workout model from Alnbc Circuits as the clock source and to trigger two drum voices, while the Oxy1 is playing with coral, a bassline and some chords. We will demonstrate different situations and configurations explaining the various possibilities offered by the Oxy1 to be externally synchronized with an analog signal. In this first case, we will synchronize our Oxygen with the clock pulse from Pamela. For this, we will only need a monopatch cable connected from one Pamela's outputs to the clock input of our sequencer. As for the configuration, we will first make sure that the auto sync option on the Oxy is turned on. Just press Shift Config, go to Performance, and then check that auto sync is on. This would be the easiest way to sync your Oxy from an analog clock. It will stop once the clock source stops. Secondly, since we are not going to use any other reset or start stop signal in this example, we will ensure that a start stop reset option in the analog menu of our configuration is set to off. So we go again to the config analog, reset, start, stop, in, and set to off. Remember that this setting affects also the output behavior. Now, the most important thing will be choosing the right type of clock division we will receive from the external clock source in terms of the number of pulses. For this, we'll go to the analog menu again, and check PPQ in. Here you can find four different settings. 24 parts per quarter, one part per sixteenth, two parts per quarter, and one part per quarter. For our example, we'll choose one part per sixteenth, equivalent to four parts per quarter. Therefore, in our clock source, Pamela will select one of its outputs and use a modifier that multiplies the model's master tempo by 4, leaving the rest of its configuration at default settings. So now you can start in Pamela's new workout and it will start also on the Oxy. If you press stop, it will also stop. Oxy1 can receive reset and start-stop signals apart from clock through the TV input. So in this second example, we'll use the start-stop option implemented in some clock sources. Its operation is based on the fact that in addition to receiving clock pulses, the sequencer will play or stop depending on the signal received at the reset CV input. To input two signals into the click CV in, we'll need a white TRS cable, like this one, which allows us to input the clock signal through the tip and the start stop reset through the ring. We'll connect our clock source to the tip, black in this case, to the channel 1 on Pamela's and the start stop signal into the red, the ring, into Pamela's output number 2. The other option would be using the separated inputs already available on the Oxy pipe. As for the configuration of our sequencer, we'll leave the auto sync in the on position and the clock type parts per quarter at one part per sixteenth. However, in this case, the receipt start stop in option in the analog menu will be set to start stop. This means that whenever this input receives a high level, the sequencer will play and when it's low, it will stop. Therefore, in our model, we'll need to select one of its outputs to provide this start stop signal in this case. It's as simple as using the special on value as the modifier for the desired channel. 
In this case, it's channel number two. As you can see, it's exactly the same operation as before, but now we have a start-stop signal. For this third option, we'll use a reset signal instead of a start-stop. The main difference is that it's a pulse rather than a constant signal. Therefore, every time our sequencer receives this pulse, it will reset the playback. We will use the same white TRS cable, but in this case, we'll set our devices to receive and emit the reset pulse. In terms of the sequencer config, the reset start stop in option in the analog menu will be set to pulse reset. This will make the sequencer return to the beginning of the sequence every time it receives a pulse. Now in our model, we'll configure the corresponding output to send a pulse every time we stop our sequencer. We will select the rising pulse modifier for the channel. Notice how the playback bar in our sequencer returns back to the beginning once we press stop. When AutoSync is off, if the clock stops, Oxygen's playback will keep the last step until it receives a reset or a start-stop signal. 